and welcome to episode 17 of our project hybrid P400, as we're going to name it, mm. bike build Honda 400 1978 thing. Now, so, what are we doing today? Well, we're going to crack on with wiring as one of the jobs. Malcolm's the expert on that, so he's got to rewire the entire bike, and we're hopefully going to work towards getting it started today. So, fingers crossed. What we're also going to do while Malcolm's doing that is I'm going to make a bracket on the back here to put the LED light. We've decided that having seen these lights during the day, the brake lights just aren't strong enough to be noticeable as more than the daytime running lights. So we're going to put an extra light LED in the back there, but I don't want to just stick it on here. So we're going to make a bracket on here. Another one on the front. Battery box is the priority because the new battery has come and it's significantly bigger than the old one because it's correct it's the right one this time so new battery box terminals the other way around but that's not too much of a problem it does explain the bits of wood that were waiting there is for battery him it does <laughs> indeed because it's the wrong size and other than that we've also got another couple of bits to do so stick with us and let's get cracking So the first thing we're going to do is make a new battery box. We were going to extend this old one, but it's just too much fiddling around. So the idea is just to make a whole new one based on this battery here. And it's going to fit perfectly in the bottom like this one. So first thing to do is get Fergal. Fergal Sharpie. Do you get that? Right. Fergal Sharpie. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> a lot of people are. <laughs> They're probably not uh, old enough to recognise. <laughs> Okay, well we'll see. And then measure and cut and weld. So let's get cracking with that one. Whilst Malcolm cracks on with the wiring and making noise, whatever it was you dropped there. Oh, my headphones. All right. Headphones? Ear defenders. All right, okay. See, VPH, it's all good. What are you listening to, Fergal Sharky? Yeah, good heart. <laughs> hey, shut up, move on. So the first thing first is to draw round the battery and I'm leaving a gap because we want these to go in. Now these are soft spongy pads and they will go either side and underneath and on the sides to protect it so it doesn't go tinky 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 tink in the metal tray. How's it go? Tinky 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 tink. <laughs> right, now this is where it gets tricky because the sides need to be angled. So, down the front there, of course, same on this side. A bit of a gap at the at the front. And then it's going to have another gap because it's got the front lip here, so it's going to have another piece that comes up like so. And the side bits, obviously, they're going to be angled, but we're going to go up like that. Draw it up the sides. And then, obviously that's going to come down at an angle and it's going to join this top lip. So ideally, once that's up, it needs to come at an angle. Okay, so the best way to cut it, I feel, is cut out this piece like so, so it can be, that's the back, that's the bottom, that's the front lip. And then make these triangles bigger and cut them out separately because then we've got a bit to fold around the back to weld to and fold underneath to weld to. That'll be down the bottom here so I've made it slightly longer on the front. So it'll all come together when you see it come together. As you can see we've now got three pieces of metal now I'm going to bend these into shape and bend these into shape and then weld them on first of all I'll make sure obviously the battery still fits and in the meantime Malcolm explain to the ladies and gents what you've been doing I've just mounted the new coil packs which unfortunately the center core which I'll get you here 
is uh, slightly shorter than the original. So I've had to drill right next to the original crush tubes through the frame there and uh, just remount it. They look much neater on there though, than those old, old green things. Yeah, the only downside is on the green ones the terminals were top and bottom whereas these ones are side to side and they'd be a bit tricky to get that internal okay. terminal. So we might have to uh, just take it off this bracket, maybe pop the terminal on and then just pop it back. Okay, fair enough. Should be fairly simple, I think it's only a ground anyway. So there we go, the battery fits nicely in there with a gap all the way around to put the sticky pads on and keep it nice and snug. So we've got to bend that back up. Hang on a minute, let me try that the other way. Right, so the battery is now <laughs> nicely on the base and this is the front lip that I'll bend up and this is the back and uh, then I'll weld the sides on like so, they'll be slightly lower because I'll have to bend it over and bend it round so I need a slight cut and a slight bend and we're good to go marvellous so as it won't fit in the vise I shall have to use the bench edge so just put it on there bend it on the line, like so, and then just hammer it to a nice neat curve. There we go. Yeah, still good. So what I'm going to do is, uh, bearing in mind of the lean of the bike, this is the corner that's going to be forward and to the left. So I'm going to cut a nick out of here and here, big enough so the powder coat doesn't clog it up. But then if it gets moisture in or water in, it can drain out of the corner. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I appreciate it's a bit messy, but I'll just grind it off and uh, hopefully have a better join on the other side. So, fingers crossed. Thank God it's on the bottom. Hey, <laughs> I understand my welding isn't brilliant, but I'm still learning. This is my first piece of welding whilst doing this bike. So, okay, I'm not an expert and I appreciate that, but I'm giving it a go. Now, all I'm gonna do is spot weld along there rather than try and line weld it, and then just grind off all the crap. And hopefully it should come out okay. So, fingers crossed. Of course I could give it to an expert or I could ask Malcolm to do it, but I wanna try, you know, my bike. So, I wanna do it. So ground down, it's a bit better. I'm going quickly so you can't see. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. Once it's powder coated, that'll fill in any of the tiny little craps. Craps, is that the yeah, other I did there? Yeah. Like cracks, but crap. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna do the other side and that's the battery box done so we can drill the holes and mount it on and then Malcolm can mount lots of stuff to it. Yeah. So meanwhile, whilst I'm doing that, Malcolm is um, adding bits, as you can see here, He's adding new connections and well, things got, and all the coils down here. Coils are all mounted. Um, and I've pulled this piece of conduit conduit stuff off of this piece of loom here, which went up from, through the handlebars. But I decided we don't need all of this up there. So we do want the ignition. I will run that through, but that connector is going to be removed and replaced for something else more suitable. These brake light wires for the front brake switch do not need to be there because when we bought our new switch gear, it already has the wiring included in it up here, which comes out down here. 
So when I re-terminate all this, that just brings these wires down, which means I can just take this, remove them connectors and just put a couple of butt connectors on there, job done. That then leaves this bundle here. Some of this is headlight, some of this is indicators, the rest is the um, instrument lights, so we know what's doing the indicators and oil pressure, etc. They obviously will need to run up there, but rather than mess around to run in a massive piece of conduit stuff, I'm just going to thin it out and run the necessary wires only up to where we're going to plug stuff in up here. So there we have a finished battery box, nice and sturdy, welded in there. Now what we're going to do is stick this in, line up the holes, drill the holes, and then we can get it mounted. So let's do that now. So with Fergal, you just stick our drill holes in. Let's mount that. Okay, so next I'm going to mount the new horns. These are twin 12 volt horns and they're pretty loud and you'll hear them a little bit later. But I'm gonna mount them, one on this side under there, and one on the other side. These are going to sit neatly and nicely under the tank. Oh, wait, no, the other way. So they're going to go like so. I could put it in that hole there, shouldn't I? No, oh, yeah, but then you can't mount the other one. No, I oh, know. And the tank won't fit anyway. <laughs> but they're going to be down here, like so. Maybe here. Yeah, just tucked up a little bit. Yeah, I can use these brackets. Uh -huh. they can be right through those holes, yeah. yeah, put a nut and bolt on that, and then mount them on there. So that's fairly straightforward, he says. So where I'm going to mount it is on this original hole here. Of course it's not big enough so I need to get this out. Mind your hands Mark. And drill through. So for the time being they're on so we know what position they're going to be in. But we need to make the brackets a bit stronger because they're ridiculously flimsy. And we don't want that flopping around and banging on there. No, for the purposes of wiring it up and yeah, Stuff and three. positioning. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so next is the rear light. Now I've got two of these. These are flexible, and again, the links for these will be in the description below. Now, this one, I think it's this one, could be the other one, is one red, one amber, one red, one amber, one red, one amber, and it's very bright LEDs. And I'm going to make a metal plate and weld on the back of here so it can mount under there, like so. So it's going to have an additional brake light. And the plan is to wire up the other one to the hazard flashes. So when these flash hazard, this will flash orange as well. Awesome. So we've got one of those. Like I said, the plan. <laughs> yeah. You know what they say about plans. This one is one orange, one white light. And this will be the daytime running light. And I'm going to make a bracket for the front for these to go on. So. Again, this is flexible, and again, the link will be in the description below. So the first thing we're going to do is measure up and make a plate to weld on the bottom of there, and it's only going to be thick enough to stick this onto, or the other one. So, let's crack on with that. So the first things first is to measure this. Now, this measures in at 12 centimetres, well, let's say 120 millimetres, and 13 millimetres 
deep. So if I make the bracket 20 mil deep and 140 millimeters long, that should be enough to mount on there quite nicely. So let's do that now. So, 140 is there and 20 is there That's all we need, so let's cut that out. So there we go, that's now made. Uh, I've actually made it 18 and a half mil, not 20, so it's got a little bit less lip. And that is going to mount underneath like so. So what I first have to do is bend it to fit. Which isn't gonna take a great deal of doing, because basically I just do that and then just bend the corners of it. Almost there. A bit more. There we go. And then that, I shall just weld under there, like so. So I'll tack that on for now. Just tack it here, here, and here. And that's ready to be mounted. So we couldn't decide whether to mount it on the back here like so, so it sticks down just below, or mount it underneath. Malcolm suggested on here, I really do like it underneath here. I think it's out of the way and it looks quite neat. It's gonna be powder coated the same as the frame, so it's gonna be gunmetal anyway. The only issue is the travel on here. I think it should be all right. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna take it as a risk. I'm gonna hold it and Malcolm's gonna stick a spot weld under there on this side, that side, and one in the middle. And then once we take the bike apart and the wheel comes off and the frame goes upside down, we can weld it on properly. I got it. Did it get the frame right? It's getting off. I think that's got it. No knife. Okay, so that's the plan. <laughs> we'll have to stick it on when there's... I said that. Take yeah. it off. All right, smart ass. <sighs> You've messed up your thing now. Look, look at that, look. Yeah, it was because I can't angle it up far enough to hit the frame. All right, okay. Because the tyre's in the way. Right, so that'll stick on later. Okay, so obviously it can be welded a little bit later. That's not a problem. The front one, I'm just going to make another piece that's 20 millimeters deep and um, 140 millimeters wide, but it's going to have a little loop cut out of it, or a little loop stuck on the bottom. So that loop can bolt onto here, and then the piece will go across here with the front daytime running light on it. So I shall make that next. Malcolm, give us an update. What are you doing? Uh, well, I have separated these wires at the front into groups. So this stuff is the um, uh, telltale lights and whatnot. This one is our switch for the ignition. You've got these grounds and then these ones um, connect to uh, side lights. So when the ignition is on, that's running the side lights. Okay, I'll so you're just winding up. up the ignition now, eh? Yeah, I just need to figure out what all the wires do on our ignition switch that we've got. Shouldn't take two minutes. Uh, I've also connected up the uh, start button as a thing, so I've terminated the two wires for that, which are connected to our switch harness over here. Nice. So we're getting there slowly. Yes, that's the only annoying thing. Wiring is a pain in the ass and it's time consuming. It is if you're wiring something that we don't have diagrams for and you've got to figure it out. Indeed. Here it is, as you can see. It's a bracket with a little nobule on top. This is gonna be sprayed black to match the um, light brackets and the instruments and the gaiters and the indicators. It's all gonna be black. And I'm gonna just drill a hole and mount it on there. 
and then that will stick on there like so. So I'm just going to drill a hole and mount it on there now so we know what it's going to look like and then that can stay on there until we're ready to strip the bike down and that will be in the pile to be sprayed black or powder coated black should I say. Meanwhile Malcolm, where are you? What are you doing? Uh, we now have an ignition switch, Woo oil pressure light and a neutral light. Okay, fantastic. It's the first time this bike's had a working key. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Right, so this mounts the uh, brake fluid pumpy thingy. Master's master under? Yeah, down to the front brake. Yeah. Has it got anything in it? Has it got a switch on it or something? No. On the back there. Yeah, it's got a switch. Oh, yes, it yes. I don't know what that does. So that's... Uh, oh, it's probably the original front brake light switch. I need to put a washer in there to pack that out. Otherwise, Just that's going to be in the way. Maybe screw a nut to the back of it and then screw it in there. Yeah. Right, so that's a bracket for the running light as well. Done. Awesome. So, Malcolm? Yes. Tell us what you've been doing now. Uh, so we've now got... A temporarily fitted ignition switch, which I think we've already talked about, which is fine. I've connected up various bits and pieces and I've cranked it and this is the first time we've actually checked that we've got oil pressure and the new battery makes a massive difference to the cranking speed, which I shall show you now. As you remember before it was super slow but that means it turn over we've got oil pressure. So that's great. Fantastic. So once of course all the well, everything's all connected up that should crank really quickly. It'll start super quick. It'll start yeah. like doom. Yeah. Brilliant. Loving that. Yeah. It's all good. So now my next little job is to try and figure out how to fix this to this so it doesn't do that. Um, obviously it sits on the sliders at the side. So I need to make sure it's in the right position before I can work it out what's going to go where. Can I move all this rubbish out of the way? Yeah, is that right? And that's going to sit up there like so. So what we need, I'm going to get a piece of a peg and I'm going to weld it on here and drill a hole in this so it goes through. And then that will stop it going up and down, but we can then lift it off here and push it down to get it off when we need it off. So I'm going to get a piece of this round tubing that we had, weld it on here, drill a hole in here and shove it through. Easy job, five minutes. Watch this space. <laughs> So we're going to use a bit of flat bar and put a slot in there, but it's a bit awkward to make a slot. So we're going to use a bit of round bar. Um, I'll measure it up. I'll drill the hole first, I think. Measure it up. I'm probably going to need about that much, that's all. Ta-da! There you go. Fits nicely at an angle. Beautiful! So let's put it back in. See where it needs to be, cut a piece off, and weld it. So, wire and. Right, so with that pushed in there, pull it up a bit, get it in, like so. That can now be welded on there. So I should just put a tack on this side and a tack on that side, and that will be in. So temporarily to work out what's what, we've connected these up. Now I've put the indicators, green to green earth, green to green earth, then the blue to the orange wire for the left, and the blue to the blue wire to the, for the right indicator, so they're wired up. The lights, now because obviously we've got two brake lights at the moment, and there's going to be three, <laughs> two brake lights, we're going to have to put the wires together because the wire and loom only allows for one brake stop and tail light. So the ground is in two into one, the uh, right stop light is two into one, and the right running light two into one. So they're all connected now, ready to test. 
Later on, we'll cut them down and put two connectors into one properly with a proper connector. So rather than constantly refer to the book, we've written down what colour does what for the right and left switch gear. So it's an easy, quick guide, highly recommended to do, so you're not constantly remembering what does what, and then you know exactly what you're doing with each wire. Otherwise you spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, winker relay. Same here. So, with the old relay on and all the indicators and everything plumbed in, we've got one light, considering we're on hazard flashes, yes? No, I just left. All right, okay, and it's not flashing. So, we're going to change it for another relay and see what happens. Bye-bye. Okay, so the new relay is on. However, now, everything's working, but it's flashing twice as quick. Even if we had the additional load of the other indicators. Yeah, it's still going just as quick. Um, We've also added a 25 watt resistor. And it made no difference it whatsoever. Made zero change, yeah. So if anyone's got any idea as to why this might be happening, it would be fantastic if you could let us know, please, in the comments below. Because we're a bit confused what's going on here. It's just too fast. Oh, these, are L these are not LEDs, they're normal bulbs as well. So. Um, maybe it's the resistor is crap. No, because it still goes through. Not the resistor, the um, relay, sorry. I think it probably is the relay. I'm going to check the resistor, check this. That's annoying. So, now with the horn wired up, we shall test it to make sure it works by pushing the horn button. Are you ready? Really? We'll switch the ignition on then. Oh, hang on. I haven't connected it up. What a bell end. <sighs> I'm not done here. <laughs> Alright, let's try again. Ready? <laughs> it's great because, oh, perhaps we can use it as a sensor. Every time I want to say the word. <laughs> <laughs> so the rear lights are now wired up and the front lights are wired up, but only side lights and main. So we've got the lights here. Brake lights are not wired up yet. And on the front, we've got no side light. No, but as as we haven't got one yet. Have That'll be the daytime running light, will be that. That will be, yes, which will be under there later. And we've got the main light. Ah! And main beam. And main beam and dip. So we've got lights. And now, well, I say now, <laughs> this is all we can do for today, but. Yeah, fast flasher, which we still need advice on, please. Yeah. But that's our first look at the rear lights, isn't it? It is. From the side here, you can still see they're quite nice, quite bright. Yeah, obviously the brake light, this will be up here, and these are also brake lights. But we shall be putting them on later on. Our next video will be finishing the wiring. Hmm, yes. But we have run out of time. So as Malcolm said, we have run out of time for this video. We'll be back next time where we'll be finishing the wiring and finishing off the little touches of getting this done, getting those sorted out, getting the, all the wiring done and firing the bike up again so we can hear it running with the new wiring loom sorted out. And we'll get the brake lights done and a few other little bits we've got to do as well. We've got to mount all this stuff as well onto the battery box. And we have, wires, so. yes we have. So Once that's all in place and the wires are shorter in length and as such then it's pretty much stripped down time. It is, yeah after that we're going to be stripping the bike down which we might get stuck on on our next video. That'd be awesome if we do. I'm not sure if we'll get that far. Next video is going to be finishing the wiring. It is. I can tell you that. But we've also start mounting some stuff like this, getting the final little bit sorted out, and then we're gonna start stripping the bike down, ready to be sent off for powder coating. Mm. That is gonna be coming very soon. And then we'll do all the little tidying up bits, like finishing this off, 
doing the weld, sorting them out, getting lots of little bits sorted out, okay. ready. Anything that needs cleaning up, grinding, welding, or getting yes. down, kind of stripped down. Also going to stick this on as well, get the, uh, yep. the battery fitted quite nicely, and be nice to get these sorted out as well. So, please join us next time. However, in the meantime, please ride and drive carefully. But have fun. Bye-bye.